Hello everybody, my name is Harriet Tierney. I'm a professor of radiology in Switzerland and I'm very happy to present you a little overview on our paper published in JMRI on gadolinium-based contrast agents. Gadolinium-based contrast agents, they have been widely used since initial FDA approval back in 1988 for the improved diagnosis, especially to detect and characterize oncologic inflammatory and also cardiovascular diseases. And it is estimated that in the meantime, more than 700 million doses have been administered worldwide in clinical practice. However, we have to chelate the gadolinium 3 plus ion with a ligand to minimize toxicity. And this ligand can have two forms, linear or macrocyclic. These ligands affect physiochemical properties of the molecule, including relaxivity, stability, water solubility, as well as toxicity. So there are two structures of gadolinium. Gadolinium can be chelated with an open ligand, like in this case, the linear agents, but gadolinium can also be chelated in form of a, of a cage. And as you can already imagine, the macrocyclic agents, they are more stable than the linear agents. But gadolinium-based agents, they also have risks. We know that in 206, nephrogenic systemic fibrosis have been described for the first time, but only in patients with renal failure. Whereas in 2014, gadolinium deposition has been observed in the brain, but it is also present in bones and other organs of patients with normal renal function, and typically after repetitive gadolinium administration. But what the two pathologies have in common, they both have been observed mainly after the administration of linear agents. And this had, of course, an impact on guidelines in after the first NSF wave, let's call it like this, back in 2006, the FDA decided to contraindicate the linear agents in patients with the impaired renal function with the GFR below 30, whereas the macrocyclic agents, including Prohens, Multihens, and Ablavar, they could be given, but only with caution. And in Europe, the EMA and also the European Society of Urogenic Radiology divided the agents in three groups, in high risk class, in a medium risk class, and in a low risk class, whereas the high risk class was contraindicated in all patients with renal insufficiency. In 2014, when gadolinium deposition has been discovered for the first time, this had an impact on the guidelines. And in Europe, in 2017, the EMA has decided to suspend all the linear agents with the three exceptions, multi-hands, and uh, Primovist was restricted to liver use, and Magnevist was still available, but only for intraarticular use with a dilution of 1 to 200. And only the macrocyclic agents could be maintained. And what is also part of the guidelines, when we look also at macrocyclic agents, these agents should always be used with caution in patients with an EGFR below 30, and there should be at least seven days between two injections. And there is also another recommendation for all patients. In all patients, the use of the smallest amount of contrast medium that is necessary for a diagnostic result. So this is the impact on patients. However, these agents has, have also an impact on the environment. We know that the gadolinium-based agents are excreted via the kidneys after 24 hours in healthy patients. And we also know that the annual emission of gadolinium is estimated of 19 tons in the EU and 21 tons in the US. And in France, we know that it is estimated that gadolinium in wastewater systems will uh, have about three kilos per MR scanner per year. And what is also quite important for all of us is that these gadolinium complexes, they can reach plants via the leaves, and then they go to the wastewater, and finally, gadolinium can reach food. 
And uh, this has, of course, an important impact on the environment. Uh, and this is also part of our publication. This uh, means that we have the opportunity to evaluate non-contrast enhanced methods, which would be important, or to reduce the injected gadolinium dose, uh, including new high relaxivity agents, or to inject, of course, only the most stable agent, what is already the case in Europe. When gadolinium is injected to the patients, we have also the opportunity to recycle. There are recycling initiatives to, for unused gadolinium-based agents. And on the other hand, if gadolinium is excreted in the urine by the patient, there is also an opportunity to collect urine. And then these gadolinium-based agents, they are released into the wastewater systems, which is, of course, a challenge because currently they are not removed by conventional water treatment plants. And there is an opportunity for advanced water treatment methods. But this is still a long way to go. And therefore, not only for the patient, but also for the environment, it is very important to reduce the quantity of these gadolinium-based agents by maintaining, of course, image quality and diagnostic accuracy. And this is also part of our publication. There are various strategies for reducing or replacing gadolinium-based agents. One strategy is to reduce the dose by using a high relaxivity agent. And other possibilities are, of course, the use of contrast agents where that, contain, that do not contain gadolinium, the use of unenhanced MRI protocols, and the use of artificial intelligence by its own or in combination with new contrast agents. There are two uh, new generations of gadolinium-based agents with a chemical structure of macrocyclic agents, and they are in part currently marketed or in development. Gadopiclenol is one of these agents. It has two sites of water molecule exchange with a hydration number Q of two. It has a macrocyclic structure. It has an excellent in vivo stability and it has a two to three times higher relaxivity compared to other currently available gadolinium-based agents, and it has no protein binding. And this is uh, the only macrocyclic uh, high relaxivity agent that is currently approved in the US and also in Europe, including Switzerland and the United Kingdom. There are various publications, and it has been shown that preclinical and clinical studies, they showed comparable efficacy when injecting half dose of gadolinium compared to the standard dose used with currently approved gadolinium-based contrast agents. And two phase three studies have shown that gadopiclenol is non-inferior at a dose of 0.05 millimol compared to full dose of gadobutrol concerning lesion visualization. And this is just an example where you can see that actually lesion detection is the same by injecting only half dose of gadolinium, comparing gadopiclenol to gadobutrol. There is another uh, um, molecule that is currently under research, uh, which is uh, quadro quatran, and it has a novel tetrameric structure. It is also a high relaxivity agent and it is currently in late-stage clinical development. A recent publication just came out in 2024. There are other strategies for reducing or replacing gadolinium-based contrast agents, various unenhanced alternatives, such as arterial spin labeling, time of flight, phase contrast, diffusion-weighted imaging, and so on. And they all have promising diagnostic performance reflecting different pathophysiological phenomena, However, their use in clinical practice as surrogate for conscious enhancement is still unclear, and a lot of research is going on in this context. There are also other possibilities for improvements in image analysis and practice. There are various new MRI techniques to improve image quality and speed, uh, MR, especially abbreviated protocols with uh, less sequences and quicker sequences are underway. And of course, also artificial intelligence to improve the effectiveness of contrast enhancement, artificial intelligence by its own or in combination. 
And uh, for all this reason, you can see that we would like to avoid NSF. There are luckily no new publications uh, since, uh, the, since the guidelines have changed. And of course, unclear whether lithium deposition in various organs is also a challenge with potential harm. We don't know yet. There are also environmental issues, and we are, have an increasing pressure from healthcare authorities to decrease our costs. And therefore, reducing or avoiding the use of gadolinium is of utmost importance. So the decrease of this gadolinium-based administration can be done by new generation of gadolinium-based conscious agents that allow us a dose reduction due to higher relaxivity. Currently, there is only one product available and approved in the US and Europe. It is called gadopicanol. However, there are also other research artificial intelligence to further use the dose by combining with these new agents or even without conscious administration is a possibility in the future, as well as new MRC consists to reduce or avoid gadolinium-based administration. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope that you will enjoy our publication.